a full server failover the, the technique used to protect physical servers to other physical servers or physical to virtual x to x in this case in this scenario i'm using a hyper v source server and i'm going to fail over to a vmware virtual machine on the left my source server is called site a server 3 and on the right the vmware server is called site a server 3 dash dr ip addresses and are different we're in different subnets we're failing over a wan I'm just making sure that the disk capacities match up, so I'm, I'm usually prefer to have a little bit more disk space on my target server, but plenty of disk space on both servers is a good starting point. Now using the Double Take console, the new Double Take 5.3 console, I need to add the two servers and then I can push out the Double Take agent and install Double Take. Once the servers are listed in the console, I can right click on them and specify to install. I can choose some global settings, things such as the location for the double take queue when we are queuing to disk if necessary, the amount of memory to allocate to the double take queue, and any minimum disk space requirements. Specify a license code or select one from the license inventory, and then click the install button. Now, double take is going to verify that .NET 351 is installed on the servers and it's going to push out the double take agent and install it. It's going to take a lot longer to push out the agent to the remote server. Double take is now installed on both our source and target server. Um, as these are physical machines, I, I, I know they're virtual, I'm going to be considering them to be physical for the purpose of full server failover. I'm going to assign them to my physical servers group. And I'm going to use the get started wizard and specify I wish to protect an entire server. Choose my source server. The, the method of protection, I could just protect files and folders or I can do full server failover, which is what I particularly want to do. I can look at my replication rules and modify the rules accordingly. Choose a target server, which is site a server 3-dr. I can change the name of the protection job if I wish. I'm just going to put FSF for full server failover on the end. Specify a time for a failure detection to be uh, detected, which is 50 seconds as a default. I can specify scripts if I wish to run a script on failover. Um, re reserved IP addresses. Now for a one failover, I can specify the reserved IP address to be the IP address of the server. But if I was failing over IP addresses, I was wanted to take the IP address and apply it to the target server, I would need to specify a second IP address to reserve. Reserved IPs are used for failing back. I can choose additional staging folder options and also network configuration. Now I am failing over across a WAN to a remote subnet. So I need to specify DNS server settings that will be updated on failover. So I need to provide a DNS administrator's username and password in order to update DNS. I can also specify schedule snapshots and compression options. I I'm going to use the default of a snapshot every one hour and turn on a minimum level of compression. There are some uh, default double take mirror properties that can be specified. As we're doing full server failover, we're going to do a block checksum mirror, which would allow us to precede data if we wish to. I can look at the services that are configured to be stopped on the target server. By default, the majority of servers will actually be stopped on the target server as it is not running as a conventional server. I can choose bandwidth limiting options and schedule, uh, specify schedule time of day changes in the bandwidth utilization to allow double take to use. The summary page is going to verify compatibility between the source and target server. As you can see here, I have a warning about the amount of memory on my target server. Not too concerned about that. Uh, Windows will continue to run with a smaller amount of memory. Click finish. Double take is going to create the replication set and create the connection between the source and the target server. 
and we're going to start replicating and mirroring data simultaneously. The mirror can take some time, so I'm going to skip ahead until the mirror has become idle and the server is protected. Okay, the server is now protected and I could do a failover. I could do a graceful failover without actually causing a real failure of the production server. Um, but I'm going to make a change to my production server. I'm just going to put some data onto the desktop. I'm going to make a registry change. And we should see when we fail over that these registry changes have come across to the target server. And I'll just create an another file quickly before I um, power off the server. So I'm just going to do a, a complete dirty shutdown of the source server. So there's about half a second there between creating that file and turning the, the server off. And I can now wait for the failover condition to be met. The default was 50 seconds, so I'm just going to speed up this part of the video. Had I enabled automatic failover, Double Take would automatically start the failover process once the failover was detected. Okay, the failure has been detected and we can see the status is failover pending. I'm going to hit the failover button and I'm going to do a live failover. I could have reverted to any of the snapshots listed there also. We remember we had hourly snapshots. Okay, um, you can see the failover is starting. This takes usually between 10 and 15 minutes. Okay, we can see a double take is restarting the target server. As you can see, as I try and ping the original source name, I'm still resolving to the original IP address. Failover is complete, and now if I ping, I can see I'm resolving to the remote IP address and I'm getting a response. As I log into the server, I can see the two files I'd created. Even the file I created the same second that I powered off the source server, it still was protected, it came across. The registry key I created is also there. It shows you if I'd installed applications on the source server, the applications would have come across to the target. If I look in server manager, I can see the server name is correct, site a server 3. It was previously site a server 3-dr. The new feature in DoubleTake Availability 5.3, the ability to reverse the full server failover protection and fail back. So first of all, just verify in the console, I can see two servers called Site A Server 3. I've powered on my original source server again. But obviously, I'm still resolving the name to the IP address at the remote DR site. I can now click the Reverse Protection button. Now this is going to prepare the original source server ready to complete a full server failover back to it. This could take some time, so I'll skip to the point where the restore is complete. Okay, the restore is complete. I'm just going to log on to the original Hyper-V source server. So this was the virtual machine that was the source. If I look at the name, it is actually called Site Server Site A Server 3-DR, where our ESX virtual machine is still the production source server. So we started with a Hyper-V virtual machine as our source and a ESX virtual machine as our target. And now we're ready with a ESX virtual machine as our source and a Hyper-V virtual machine as our target. The roles of the two servers have actually swapped. I can complete the protection by pressing the start button and double take is going to create the connection from the new source server, the ESX virtual machine, back to the original source server which is the Hyper-V virtual machine. Again these could be physical to physical of any hardware type. Now Double Take is going to do a block checksum remirror which is very handy because the majority of the data is already in position on the original source server. We're just going to resync the data, verify that everything is consistent and correct. That re-protection is completed, but I've also added in a few other protection jobs. Um, what I've got here is uh, some Hyper-V protection jobs using host level protection. I've got VMware to VMware protection. All I've been covered in earlier videos, and I've got the full server failover protection job. 
what we're able to do in uh, double take availability 5.3 is fail over a whole bunch of servers using different technologies if necessary all with a single click so I'm selecting all of the server jobs all of the protection jobs hitting the failover button selecting live failover and clicking OK you can see my virtual machine my ESX virtual machine which is currently the source has been shut down gracefully I did a graceful failover now the various protection methods using double take availability have, have different failover times um, full server failover it usually takes between 10 and 15 minutes whereas the Hyper-V level protection is generally about one to two minutes the real benefit though of using double take availability 5.3 is that we're able to manage the protection of physical and virtual servers uh, using various different techniques but still using the same management console to initiate a failover but with a single click one other thing I can look at is the ability to fail back an entire group of servers that are failed over using different technologies again with just a single click for full server failover I do need to manually turn on the original source server but once that it's back online again I can fail back all my servers simultaneously <laughs>